Hello, I'm Greg Crinklaw, the developer of SkyTools. In this video, we are going to look at how to plan for when you have a target object already in mind. Sometimes people ask me how to add their target to a target list, or how to look up the target in a list. But the purpose of the target selection tool is to select suitable targets in the first place. If you want to determine if a known target is suitable, there are better, more direct ways to go about it than to use the target list in the target selection tool. That said, it can sometimes be useful to add your own targets to a list, but only when you want to compare it to other targets. If we already know the target object, what we really want to do is bring all of the information about that target object together in one place. If you think about it, this is sort of the reverse of using the target selection tool. This is, in fact, what the object information window is designed to do. The way to view a target object in the object information window is to start by looking it up in the SkyTools database. Remember, target lists are not catalogs of data. They don't really contain information. Instead, they are merely lists of objects found in the SkyTools database. The object requester is used for looking up a known object. So this is where we want to start. Because it is so handy to look up an object, this tool can be found in several different places, anywhere you might want to look up an object by its designation. The first place to find it is on the top level tools menu. Click where it says designation search. This is the designation search tool its two main purposes are to add objects to a target list or to create an imaging project. That's the part down here. But it features the object requester, which is the upper part. The object requester is what we use to look up objects. We can also find the designation search dialog on the target selection tool under the add objects menu. And if we open a chart, it is used to look up chart targets. To plan for a known target, the idea is to use this to look up an object via one of these tools and then click the object information button. Most of the time you will type a designation into the search box and either press enter or click search. SkyTools can recognize a large number of different designations, and it can be flexible when it comes to how they are formatted. The main rules to remember is that a designation is usually some letters that identify the catalog, like NGC, followed by a space, and then the designation. So I'll type in Mars. The search results usually put a perfect match at the top, and this is automatically selected. Near matches are listed below it. Some basic information about the selected object is found here. Now, I could select Phobos, a satellite of Mars here, if that's what I was actually looking for, or I could search for Phobos separately. This also works for double star components. In SkyTools, Multiple stars associated with the same primary star are organized into multiple star systems rather than simple pairs, like you might find in the WDS. So let's try 70 OF. We could isolate a specific component star here. It lists letter designations for each component, the magnitude of the primary and component stars, and the current separation in arc seconds. Orbit means that this is a long period binary with an orbit. I just chose the B star of this system. So let's look at it on a chart. I'll open it in the atlas here. I can also do the same from the object info. You can see that the chart is centered on the B star of the system. Just for kicks, I'm going to time step by two years with every click. Not only do the stars orbit one another, but you can see the pair moving across the sky as well due to their proper motion. 
But I digress. Back to the designation search. Let's try a Sharpless catalog number. I'll type in Sharpless 16. Notice that it matched the more commonly used form of that designation. Now let's try a Galaxy cluster via Abel designation. I'll type in Abel 4. Wait, it says that Abel 4 is a planetary nebula. So that didn't work the way we expected it to. In fact, sometimes it may not find a designation at all. You might be tempted to think it's not in the database, but the databases are very complete. A more likely explanation is that we may not have formatted the designation in a way that SkyTools could recognize. In this case, what went wrong was that there is also an ABEL catalog for planetaries, and we need a way to distinguish the two. So the first thing to do when you can't find a match is to check the designation help. We will click on Galaxy Groups. Ah, it says that ABEL Galaxy Groups use ACO instead of ABEL to distinguish them from the planetary nebulae. So let's try that instead. Sure enough, ACO4 gets us a Galaxy Group. Here's another trick that can be really useful. Open the Browse tab. Select Galaxy Groups. The Catalog selection will list all of the available designations for Galaxy Groups. We can select one to see the preferred format. In this case, it says HCG, but it actually lists Hickson. When looking them up, either one will work. This Browse tab is a great way to explore the designations available, and it can be a last resort when you're having trouble finding an object. You can browse and even search the designations. If there are millions of results, use the up-down arrows to scroll through the database. If you are really stumped and can't find an object, open the Atlas and enter the position of the object so that you can view that part of the sky. Often, your object will be plotted on the chart, and you can note the designation that SkyTools uses for it. Refer to it by this designation in the future. Okay, so what we were trying to do was to view the object information. So we'll click the More Object Info button. The idea of this dialog is to draw everything that SkyTools knows about this object together in one place. If it is in the database or can be calculated, you can see it here. There is basic catalog info here at the top. We can customize the location, imaging system, or date time down here. These tabs hold a wealth of information. I'll start with apparent data. Most of these values depend on the location and time. They aren't just for a specific night, but the exact time selected. Next up is the night bar. This works just like the ones at the top of the other tools. The yellow line is the altitude of the sun, teal is the moon, and red is the altitude of ACO4 during the night indicated here. This can tell us the prospects for imaging this object on any given night. The year bar tells us how long ACO4 can be observed from this location every day for a whole year. The height of these green lines usually indicate the A period for each night. In October, the A period is over six hours long. The gaps or when the moon is interfering. We can expand to a single month. This can tell us the best times of year to image ACO4 or when we can get it later this month. The Synopsis tab offers a summary of the prospects for imaging the object. It tells us about imaging the object using the location, date, and imaging system selected here. If you are looking for the information displayed in the Target Selection Tool columns, 
This is where much of it can be found, just in a different format. Next up is target lists. This lists all the target lists that ACO4 is found in. The chart numbers tab lists the page numbers on which ACO4 is found on many popular atlases. If you have more than one imaging system, for instance, if you use iTelescope, then the Compare Imaging Systems tab is extremely useful. It compares available imaging systems, placing the best imaging system at the top, the next best below that, etc. It considers latitude, image scale, and the time it takes to reach the selected target SNR. In this case, it is set to an SNR of 30. This column tells us how long it is above 1.5 air mass on the best night for each location. This is how long of an exposure is required to reach an SNR of 30 in the widest available filter, which is listed here. Other filters will likely take longer. This is a rating of the image scale from 0 to 100, where 100 is the best possible scale. This column tells us how many pixels across the object is. A poor scale usually just means that it doesn't cover a lot of pixels. Let's step back for a minute and think about what planning our imaging is really all about. If we have a choice of imaging systems, then we will have different image scales available. For an extended object, the more pixels covered by the object, the less signal is received by each pixel. If all the light from the object was stuffed into one pixel, it would obtain a high signal, and that means we could reach a high SNR quickly. But it would not be a very interesting image. If the light is spread out over the detector, we might imagine capturing a lot of detail. But a high SNR might not even be possible. So what this tool is doing is trying to obtain the best image scale that can still result in a good SNR. And it chooses the imaging system that can do that best. The remaining tabs are where we can type or copy notes for this object, attach images to it, or attach web links. These attachments are covered in a separate tutorial. The Object Info window also acts as a hub where you can access other parts of SkyTools via the Action menu. We can open a chart centered on ACO4, open the exposure calculator, create an imaging project for it, add it to a target list, and so on. Enable the speech to have it speak any object information that you want it to, which can be useful if you are in the dark or need to be looking elsewhere. If you decide that this object is indeed suitable, then go ahead and create an imaging project for it. Keep in mind that the imaging system will be inherited from the object information window. So be sure to have it set to the correct imaging system before you create your imaging project. Or remember to select the imaging system when you create the project. In the next video, we will see how to create a basic imaging project. So that's it. Clear skies, and thanks for watching.